All right, so without any further ado, let me introduce to you for the first time in the Summit House, the Hot Club of New England. <laughs>
Aren't these guys great? Yeah. Yeah. When we were asked to do this concert series, I jumped online and I went on the website and I saw some beautiful pictures and I thought, absolutely, we want to do this. And then I got here and I said, let's move in. <laughs> this is just such an incredible place and we're so thankful that all of you are here. Um, this is it's exciting. <laughs> we're going to get to the music. I'll introduce these guys in a second. This is a, a beautiful old standard called But Not For Me. <laughs>
wonderful people that I'm on stage with. This is Greg Lokman on the bass tonight. Max O'Neill on the guitar. Jason Anik on the violin. This is my hubby, Matt D. Champlain, on the keyboard. And my name is Abba. <laughs> this next tune was made famous so many times. It's one of those tunes that just keeps coming back and back and back. Um, but one of my favorite versions is by the late great vocalist. Um, this, the tune is called Love Me or Leave Me, and I can't remember the vocalist's name anymore. <laughs> No, no. I mean, everybody did it, so I can name anybody. Mel Torme did this song. He's one of my favorites, but it wasn't. It was Nina Simone. That's what I was thinking of, who does an incredible version of this tune. Um, and she's one of those vocalists that the more you learn about her, the more you love her. I mean, not only was she a great vocalist, she also played beautiful piano. She was a classically trained pianist. And she was also a social activist and very, very influential in the civil rights movement. The type of person that the more you learn about her, just I'm like, I want to do more things like Nina. So here's my uh, tune for Nina tonight.
beginning, he said, if you know how to dance to swing music, head over there. I'm going to say, even if you don't know how to dance to swing music, feel free. Um, we just want everybody to have a good time tonight. This next tune actually was uh, my major influence for this is the great singer Mel Torme. He's known for having impeccable pitch, singing in tune all the time, which you would think would be easy for singers, but it's something we have to work on every day. Um, and also for, um, he was actually an arranger, those big band arrangements that you hear him doing, he wrote a lot of those. And not only was he a great singer and arranger, he was actually a fantastic drummer, and he could play quite a bit of piano. So I'm still, you know, kind of working on singing. Just got that one that I'm doing right now, but maybe eventually I'll have two or three other instruments. I don't know, and I could maybe do this by myself. <laughs> Just kidding, no, I wouldn't trade these guys for the world. We're going to do a little bossa nova for you now. This is called No Moon at All. This is nothing. 
mellow. We're going to keep it mellow for a minute. This tune was written by James P. Johnson, which happens to be uh, one of Matt's favorite pianists. Uh, a brilliant composer. He's responsible for writing the Charleston, for example. Um, so very influential rhythmically, melodically, everything on, on early jazz. Like, what are we going to be? We can thank James P. Johnson for a lot of that. Um, and this song was actually Louis Armstrong's version. is my favorite vocal version. And he was taken off the radio, not allowed to sing this song on live performances on the radio. And they took off his really popular version because it was too risque. That was in 1930. So I want you, as you're listening, maybe to think about what you heard on the radio on the way in. Let's just see. Let's compare these a little bit and see what we think. <laughs>
behind me, um, with the exception of my husband, are in a group called Rhythm Future Quartet. So if you like what you hear tonight, but you're like, eh, maybe not the singer, uh, there is an entire other group. There's a CD without me, so you could get that tonight. Uh, and actually, Matt sits in on a few of those as well. But they're, they're amazing, so it's back there. It's worth it. <laughs> This next one, I don't remember if it was a film or a Broadway play. I believe it was a film called Pennies from Heaven. Um, and this is the, the title track. And it was written during the Great Depression. So when, when you hear it, and you're like, it's kind of trite. You know, there's not a lot of juice to the lyrics. You have to think about maybe what people were going through when this was written and what they needed to hear. Uh, the movie, for example, um, in the plot, the characters end up orphans, in jail, on welfare, in the hospital. And then at the end, somehow, it all works out. So this is maybe a, a trite song, but a beautiful song about hope. Yeah. 
park side for a moment and let these guys do their thing. Well, Alan mentioned uh, a group that the three of us perform with regularly called the Rhythm Future Quartet. Um, but uh, the three of us also perform with a group that um, the Eileen just called the Jason Yang Acoustic Trio. It's a new group, and we've been uh, showcasing a lot of uh, new material. And uh, this is a new one that we composed. Uh, Max and I wrote this one. Uh, we wrote it when we were on tour in Colorado, uh, kind of looking at the beautiful landscape there, kind of similar to what you have here. Um, so I can, I think this will be the perfect song for this setting. It's called Colorado.
feature uh, my husband on a solo piano piece. I think we only have time for about two more tunes. So I'm getting sad to leave this beautiful place already. I'm going to brag on him a little bit while he's making his way over. <laughs> a lot of people ask us how we got into this music. I got into this music because my parents brought me to see live music. And they brought me to see every kind of live music that was in our area, everything that they could find. Uh, and when I heard jazz, it just somehow stuck. I just, I knew that there was more about it that I didn't understand than I did, but I really wanted to understand it. I wanted to just like delve in and do more listening. And at that point, I didn't even want to be a singer. I just wanted to, I just wanted to absorb it. So that's kind of how I came to this music. My husband um, has a family of musicians. His father is here somewhere. He's an incredible guitarist. His name is Ray. Uh, and so he grew up also with a lot of music, and his grandfather was an amateur singer. I say amateur only because he wasn't paid to do it, but he was really, really talented. And he actually had a player piano in his house. I don't know if anybody has one or anything like that. A lot of people will be like, I know someone who has one in the garage. Or something. <laughs> like, ah, uh, bring it inside. It's like a puppy. It needs to be in your home. They're absolutely amazing because they're pieces of living history. Um, some of the greatest pianists who have ever lived recorded on player pianos before there were even records. Um, so we have James P. Johnson and Fats Waller and even classical pianists like Horowitz who are um, cutting piano rolls. So it's amazing early American technology that is absolutely outstanding. And some of the first pictures of Matt are him sitting on his grandfather's lap, mesmerized by the player piano. So he started very young with this music. And he's going to showcase some of that stride piano for you tonight. Are you going to do the request? No. Okay. <laughs> Somebody had said, you know what, I would love to hear you play. And Matt said, I'll do it. This is a beautiful old tune called Sweet Sue. Thank you. 
And we only have one more tune for you, so I do have some thank yous that I would like to share. David, thank you for setting this up. He does such a wonderful job with this series. We're so thankful for you. My favorite thing to do is to share music and, and a location like this is just incredible. So thank you so much for being here. And I do want to thank the two young ladies in the front. There's a free CD from me to you. And if there's any other kids that I missed in the audience that would like a free CD, just come say hello at the end. Uh, this tune is called Then Their Eyes. I fell in love with the first time looking to them, their eyes. You guys are little cute, but for me, them, their eyes. They make me feel happy, they make me blue. No starting line falling, God, it every face we did you. My heart and your shoes are just with them.
stay calm, everybody. Please take it very slow going down the mountain. Leave plenty of space between you and the car in front of you. Thanks a lot.